Okay, so this is the session for number three of the exam one. It said uh, to find these limits algebraically, not by uh, using a calculator to uh, find uh, the numbers. And what I mean by that is, um, I saw even in some of your notes it said to find limits, you you plug in numbers uh, close to the value of the limit, in this case negative three, and whatever the number was getting close to that should be your answer. Um, oh, that's that's. Cr that will lead you sometimes to the right answer if you are lucky. Uh, it's not what you want to do all the time. So what it means to do algebraically, and it's the same thing we, we need you guys to, to understand, is that uh, what you do here is that you, you factor. You need to write, again, I'm going to find the limit when x goes to negative 3. Uh, you factor the top. It becomes uh, x plus 2, x plus 3. Uh, the bottom becomes... Uh, x plus 1, x plus 3. And then here, you get to cancel the uh, x plus 3 factor. Why do we do that? Well, because if you do that, the whole point is that now you have um, the function other than at negative 3, this thing is well defined. Right, there's no problem now to plug in negative three. So the problem is plugging in negative three, and every if you did that, I thought, of course you get a zero on the top and a zero in the bottom, and that makes something defined. That's the whole point of doing limits. We're doing with we're dealing with functions that are not defined at a point, but the limit does exist. So, um, so what we need to do is uh, try to factor uh, the the the. the, the x plus 3, which is the one that will give us the problem, but lead to the factor of 0 on the top and the bottom. And once you factor it out, then you have the problem. This, if you plug in a, a negative 3, gives you negative 3 plus 2 on the top, which is um, negative 1, and uh, negative 3 uh, plus 1 in the bottom, which gives you a negative 2. So this is negative 1 to the negative 2. So the answer is just the 1 half positive. So the limit does exist, and it's 1 half. So how you solve this one. Now, part B is a little bit more than algebra involved, but these were examples that were in the, in the homework. So uh, how do you deal if you go this? Again, if you plug in x equals 0, of course, you get a 0 at the top because uh, you get a root of 64, which is 8. Minus 8 is a 0 at the top and a 0 at the bottom. So if, if, you, if you recognize what, what, what this is, in fact, this is the derivative of a function. Uh, and the, 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 main, the definition of the root of this is what you would do to find the root of a root of x and value at, at, at x equals 8. Um, so anyway, what the trick to do here, the key uh, trick to do in this case is to multiply top and bottom by uh, this with a plus 8 and the same thing in the bottom. Uh, why? Because I'm, I'm doing, uh, this is like my a minus b a plus b, and when you multiply a binomial like that, your answer is a squared minus b squared, right? So um, my a is the whole thing, 64 minus plus 8 inside of the root. So when you square that, you get the 64 plus 8, uh, and the square root cancels to the square root. The second term is minus a 64. And in the bottom, uh, nothing simplifies a lot, but you're going to have an x, and then you're going to leave the root of 64 plus x, then the plus 8 of that. Okay, so in the top, again, uh, these things cancel. That's what you can have in the, oops, the 64s go out, and we have a um, nice x over x times root of 64 plus x. So this is why um, you don't want to distribute this x in the bottom because now the x is going to cancel, right? So your, your final answer is 1 over, uh, sorry, I, I, I should have written that all this and all these steps, I'm still taking the limit, right? And this is a common myth, mishap. So here I'm taking the limit when x goes to 0. I'm taking the limit when x goes to 0. And at this point is where I can, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still write it if you want. That, that makes it a little bit more clear, I think. I'm taking it when x goes to 0. And I have a 1 over root of 64 plus x plus 8. At 
this page, now I can plug in x equals zero. And, um, and once I plug in x equals zero, then that's where I don't have to write the limit anymore. So it becomes one over root of 64 plus eight, which is just a 116, right? Because the root of 64 is eight, so that's it. So again, uh, if you plug in just uh, zero, of course it's zero with zero, that's the whole point, the limits, we're going to be evaluating limits at other functions where, where they're interesting, uh, not, not when you just number that you plug in and it works. And, uh, and a good thing to go with this problem is uh, if you don't understand this problem here, this is the idea, right? So at this point here, for example, the limit when this approaches uh, negative three from one side, it approaches three. When it approaches negative three from the other side, it also approaches three. The limit does exist at three. But the function at three is this value down here, right? So the limit when it approaches three does exist, but uh, it would be three, and uh, but the function at negative three is one. So that's that's what the limit is happening. A limit does not exist when either something like this happens, when the limits from the left and from the right are different, or something like this happens. But right? have a half and third. In, in which case, when you uh, you get to a different direction. Okay, so that's uh, number three. I'll make another video for the other part.